everybody! Thank you so, so much for joining me today. So today we're going to paint this painting here. So this is an acrylic painting on canvas. And today I'm going to go through lots of different palette knife techniques, also a little bit of glazing technique, and how to achieve depth. So I hope that you really enjoyed this tutorial. I absolutely adored painting this, and it was great, great fun. So let's crack on with the video. So first of all, grab your small brush and get a bit of ultramarine or whatever colour that you want to use. So we're just going to sketch out an oval looking shape and we're going to create sort of like a map for where the wave is going to go. So once you've done that, then take it from the top and just gently take it down to the side of the canvas. And using that same motion, do it the other side as well. Next get a bigger brush, one that you can use for quite a large area of canvas and I'm going to take some ultramarine just a little bit of cad red and a bit of white as well now we're going to be using this for the sky so feel free just to get the sky colour that you like the most and just quite haphazardly paste that in the top because this is just the first layer so we're going to be adding at least one other layer on top of this. So give your brush a wash out and next we're going to be adding in the sea so I'm going to take a bit of ultramarine and Payne's grey just to give it that depth and then I'm just going to start pasting in that lower section of the wave And you just want to take that up to the very top of the oval that we made out earlier. So 
So now I'm going to pop some paint in the middle of the wave and for that I'm going to use Azure Blue which is a really beautiful bright blue colour and that's just going to really mimic the shallower water in that wave. I'm also just going to drag that up a little bit because later on we're going to add a bit of spray and I'd just like to see a bit of blue up there as well. So I'm going to start filling in the tube of the wave and to create some shadow I'm using Azure Blue with a bit of warm grey mixed in. And I'm just going to take that right to the edge of the canvas. Now I'm taking a bit of warm grey and adding a tiny bit of cadmium red because we're going to add in some warmer tones later for when we add sea spray. Okay, so by now our sky should have dried up, so I'm going to use some ultramarine blue, cadmium red and a bit of white again, and I'm just going to go over that sky one more time just to give it a bit more depth and look like it's got more paint on. And the same with the sea, I'm going to do another layer, so I'll take some ultramarine and some Payne's grey and I'm just going to go over all that sea again, again just to bring in the depth. So now I'm going to take some Azure Blue again and I'm just going to add in a little bit more colour in that middle of the wave and also just take that a little bit more down into the froth.
And now I'm just going to take a little bit of the warm grey and add that into the azure blue and just go over again where the sea spray and foam and things like that are going to go. Um, but we'll also need to add in some of those warm tones again. So once that's sort of blended a slight bit, we're just going to add in them warm tones by taking the warm grey and adding a bit of cad red again. And just like last time, I'm going to take that in from the side and then just add it a little bit where we're going to add some sea spray as well. So now we just want to wait for that to completely dry because we're going to be adding some more sea spray in layers with palette knife in a bit. Okay, so now we're going to use your palette knife to get that ready and we're going to put in the background of some of the sea spray and just add some dimension. So grab some white with a tiny tiny bit of cadmium red just blend that in really really well then next we're going to take some warm grey and add that in just to take the edge off so it's not quite a bright white and we're going to pop it on the bottom of the palette knife and just very very lightly just pick up the grain of the canvas so we don't want to push on too hard we just want to really really be gentle so it's only just touching the canvas and just using a circular motion just go around and around till you get the right amount of paint on there obviously everyone's taste is different so just do it to the amount that you're happy with I just like to do it to add a little bit more interest and to make the painting have more layers and so I'm going to go ahead and add this in quite a lot of areas in the sky just because the sea is spray so it really looks like it's just flicking right up from the wave and now I'm just going to bring that same technique right down into the wash Now when we're using the palette knife in the sea, I want to go on a sideways direction. So you always want to be going in the actual direction of the waves or the wash that you're trying to mimic. And then up here I'm going to go back in a circular sort of motion just because that's going to be a lot of sea spray coming down from there. And again in a circular sort of motion, I'm just going to add some up at the top where again the sea spray is going to come off that wave. So next I'm going to take some of the azure blue and add that into the same mixture just to give it more of a blue tint so it gives the illusion of looking through the wave and seeing that shallow water. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and I'm going to just use my palette knife again, pop some of that in the middle of the wave just to give it a lot more depth and a little bit more colour and interest. And I absolutely love this thalo turquoise colour so I'm going to have to add this somewhere so I'm going to pop it down in the forefront here just to give it a little bit of a turquoise feel. And just to tie it all in together, I think I'm going to add a little bit just in the middle, just here. So 
So on mine the C looks a little bit transparent so I'm just going to take some ultramarine and Payne's grey again and just pop another layer on there just to take away a lot of those brush marks and just to take the opacity up a little bit. So I'm not too happy with the top of the wave and I think I'm just going to blend that out a little bit and smooth out that edge because it looks a little bit shaky. <laughs> so just add that in however is best for your painting. And once again just completely let that dry. So you want to now grab a bit of a smaller brush and this is the exciting bit because now we get to add on a few little details and it's going to bring it to life so much. So I'm going to add in this white where all those splashes are going to go and all the wash and it's just going to really contrast against that grey that we've already put in the background. So now I'm just adding bits of froth in the wave and I'm using the very tip of my paintbrush just to very lightly make these little lines and squiggles and dots and things like that. You can also use a palette knife for this part if you would rather do that um, but I just think you can have a little bit more control when you use a paintbrush. So right now what I'm doing is just using a circular motion and scumbling over the canvas just very haphazardly once again because we will sort of go over this in a little bit more detail but just going round and round and round and creating this sort of like backwash of misty water. So now I'm going to make a mixture of ultramarine, phthalo turquoise and white 
and I'm just going to use this to add a little bit more interest in the front and we're going to be using very similar marks that we've just done um, but just in this lighter bluey colour just to, as I say add a bit more interest And just picking up a little bit of titanium white and just adding a few little dots and areas of it then you can really just make it look like it's sparkling in the sun. And once again, just want to let that dry. So for the next bit, you want to make sure your palette knife is nice and clean. So I'm just going to wipe mine with a bit of tissue or you can use kitchen roll. And we're going to be adding a bit more texture and a few more layers now with the palette knife. So with the warm grey, I'm just going to take that over the surface. You can see it's just on the tip of my palette knife. I'm just taking that over the surface of the canvas, just in this sort of left side here. And I'm just going to run it over this sort of cloud of mist here just to take away some of those harsh white lines and just blend it all in a little bit better. Now I'm going to add a bit of white into this mixture that we already have of warm grey and azure blue. So if yours has dried up that's that's all it is mixed together. Um, just to take it sort of like an off white really and again just adding in more layers in that wash just to really make it look very detailed. And now I'm going to add a bit of cad red and a bit of white, obviously just a tiny tiny bit of cad red just to warm that colour up quite a lot and we're just going to add this in again in the left side. It's really important that with any painting you always have cool colours and warm colours as well um, because the two tones are what makes something look more realistic because in real life if you look at an object it will always have a cool tone and a warm tone to it. Now I'm going to get quite a lot of white paint on the bottom of my palette knife because now I'm going to go in with areas of a lot of white. So when you're working at the top of the weave it's good to sort of work in an upwards direction, again slightly circular but in a way that would mimic the wind taking the water and the spray. I'm also going to take the white a little bit heavier in a few areas here in tube of the wave and just using the bottom of my palette knife just here I'm just going to sort of take the grain of the texture of the canvas and just to let that pick up some of the whiteness and um, just to again blend it in and using that same technique I'm just going to take that right down to the right side of the canvas and also on this sort of cloud of mist.
and it's important to remember it's going to make it so much easier if you use the palette knife in the direction that the wave is going. And just taking that technique right at the bottom, just adding in those tiny little sparkles of light just to blend it all in together. So next I'm going to use another palette knife technique and that is the impasto effect. So in other words, it's basically taking quite a lot of paint and adding it in quite a large amount and chunks. I will show you this from a side viewpoint as well so you can really see the effect that it has but it basically just makes the painting really interesting to look at up close. So this is it from the side view and this is really just showing that impasto effect. So once that's dry, we're going to take a smaller brush and a bit of azure blue and next we're going to do a bit of glazing. So glazing with a colour is a bit like adding a coloured filter over something. So I'm just using this azure blue to pick out some areas that I want a little bit more vibrance in and you can use this with any colour, any acrylic colour. And I'm using it with a bit of water, just a, a small amount of water, because this acrylic paint that I'm using is quite transparent anyway. Um, but if you're using a bit more of an opaque paint, then I would recommend maybe using a medium. And just taking a little bit of white, I just feel like there's a bit of a gap at the top so I'm just going to add a little bit more white just to blend that out a little bit. I do tend to get a little bit white happy sometimes so if you're comfortable with your painting the way it is then I would recommend just leaving it. And using that sort of glazing method again, I'm just going to add in a few little bits um, in different areas that I can see. Like this area, I just want it to go a little bit more up at the top. So just using a scumbling method, I'm just going to blend that in so you can't see any visible lines but it just looks a bit brighter. And now I'm going to take this iridescent blue paint which is so beautiful, I'll leave a link in the description box. Um, and I'm just going to use it to add a little bit of interest again when looking at it from the side. I think it just brings a whole new magic and it makes the wave come to life even more.
Yay, we did it guys! Thank you so, so much for joining in with me with that tutorial. I had a great time. I'm going to be having a couple of giveaways coming up really, really shortly because I'm nearly at 50,000 YouTube subscribers and also nearly at 20k followers on Instagram. And all that support just means so much to me. Like, I can't believe that there are that many of you guys and it's so, so nice. So I just want to thank you so much for your support. As I say, Make sure you keep on checking because there will be a couple of giveaways as soon as we hit those numbers. You can keep up to date with stuff on my Instagram or my Facebook and Twitter and see regular art updates and things. And feel free to share your versions of this tutorial on there and just tag me in so I can see it. So thank you so much guys and I'll see you in the next video.